Hello and welcome back to another episode of Discover Cars. I'm Cameron and today we're checking out the new Mercedes AMG GT Black Series. Now, the AMG GT Black Series has been one of the most anticipated cars for 2020 and now we finally know what it looks like, what it sounds like and we just waiting to see how it drives because that's the main question we've got to ask. Because the AMG GT line is one of the most confusing naming schemes we've got so far from Mercedes-Benz. We don't really understand as a consumer what each AMG is trying to do and achieve when facing up against rivals like the Porsche 911, the Porsche GT3 RS, and we don't really understand where it sits. They're sort of trying to go for what Porsche's done with the 911, but it's a bit confusing. So you've got the AMG GT, you've got the GTC, you've got the GTS, you've got the GTR, now we've got the GT Black Series. Now the only video we've got so far is this ad that they filmed with Shmi 150. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of Shmi, but it was a very odd ad. It's quite uh, cheesy in typical AMG ad fashion and yeah, I mean, at least we got to see shots of the car. I mean, Shmi steals the car in the ad, drives it around, then texts someone, and we don't know who that is, and he says the car is from another planet, but the person reminds him saying, no, it's made an unfolder back. So, if you didn't know, that's where AMGs are made. Just a very weird, weird way to introduce a very special car. Hmm, interesting ad. But besides the point, it sounds amazing in the ad. And that was one of the biggest concerns because the sound was one of those things that is very important to an AMG car and if it doesn't sound very good then you're not going to sell many to enthusiasts that are looking for the entire AMG experience which is loud, good looking, muscly and all importantly very powerful. And now outside this ad we've had video clips that didn't sound too promising for the new AMG GT Black Series. Everyone was worried about if this was going to be the car to introduce AMG's four-cylinder into a product line other than the A45 because we're expecting the new C63 to actually have this new four-cylinder when it comes out in its new variant which is a bit concerning for people who love that V8 sound but then also we've got some great Instagram photos of the car out of the ad in proper lighting and seeing what this thing truly looks like and what we can tell straight away is that this car is straight inspired from the AMG GT3 Cup car. Now this race car looks aggressive, it's great, it's low to the ground, it's a proper race car and I think they've done a really good job of translating that race car into something that you can use on the road, which we can see right here. We're looking at the new Instagram posts uh, that have been all been shared, everyone's been sharing the new image of this AMG GT and you can tell straight away it's got a bigger, more aggressive Panamericana grill. And the issue with that Panamericana grill is that every single AMG model gets it from an SUV to the A-Class. It used to be special, but mm, I debate that now. But this new bigger version makes it feel a lot more aggressive at the front. You've also got these great new AMG GT headlights incorporated and it looks like they took the clay model for what was going to be the AMG GT Black Series and went, all right, here's a knife, have at it. Because what I'm seeing here is, I think, almost more vents than the McLaren Senna, which is huge. You've also got these really aggressive louvers that are designed to probably lift pressure out from the uh, wheel well or increase cooling somehow, but they are built into the body, which looks so much better than what the AMG GTR Pro has, which is these weird stuck on versions of these louvers. And you've also got this really cool front facing vent, which tells you actually where the engine is in this car. It's so far back. And that's where it's probably trying to cool down the hot V setup that they've got with the turbochargers there. And then you've also got two heat extractors heading out from the bonnet over the windshield there. So very aggressive front grille. On the side and the rear three quarters, you can see you've got very aggressive slits down the side just behind the front wheels. Moving back, you've got aggressive sills and 
aggressive side skirts there and you come up to a more widened hip. There's a little bit of a lip there that is trying to make the thing look a little bit wider and probably trying to cover up the wheels because it's probably got an increased track width at the back compared to the normal AMG GTs. We're having a look at the exhaust system here. They've ditched what the AMG GTR has in the GTR Pro with the three exhaust setup. They've gone for the classic four exhaust setup here and they're rounded. So weird choice for that to be honest, which is what you get on the new base AMGs, which I think sort of takes away how special this car is because the SLS AMG Black Black Series, the C63 Black Series, all got these trapezoidal looking exhausts, which is very distinct to the car. Now they've gone to these round exhausts, it's not making the Black Series very distinct from the rear end. Other than this multi-story apartment complex that's been thrown onto the back of this car. I mean, have a look at this wing. It is just absurd. First of all, you've got the little duck tail on the boot lid that's designed to create a little bit of lift. Then you've got this, this skateboard looking thing in the middle, which is obviously a, acting as another bit of aero. And then you've got the overarching wing, which is just ridiculous in terms of how tall, how many blades you've got going on. It just looks like someone's gone out to eBay and 3D printed themselves a new wing for their AMG GT. But hey, if it's functional, can't blame him because it's probably been developed from the GT3 race car. But yeah, it's a very, uh, very, very big wing. And I think that'll be the controversial part of this car is that if you want to drive around in a car with that wing on the back, yeah, you want people to look at you and you want people to know that you're driving the AMG GT Black Series. And I don't really love this two-tone paint. That's the launch color. It looks a bit meh. I think it's uh, gonna look cooler in probably race liveries or just a single colored paint because I just think this black paint's doing no favors trying to distinguish what the car looks like. And that's my biggest concern is that the AMG GT Black Series actually isn't that different from the car that it's based off. And I think the GTR was almost like the Black Series, but then they went ahead and made a GTR Pro and now a GT Black Series. So it's really hard to understand where this car sits. Obviously it sits at the top of the tree, but it's, we have to understand how much more powerful this is, if this is how much more quicker this is than the AMG GTR Pro around the track, and if it's really worth probably the big cost jump from the AMG GTR. Now, the big thing is that it will be producing a lot more power than the AMG GTR. They have to make a point that this car is special and is actually different from the existing performance versions of the AMG GT. Which sounds a little ridiculous because I thought AMG was meant to be a special car enough already, but there's so many different variants that it's hard to understand what they're trying to achieve with each model, which is like what I said earlier. But the AMG GTR currently puts out 577 horsepower, which is about 430 kilowatts, and can go 0 to 100 in 3.5 seconds. So we're looking at the AMG GT Black Series, which is probably gonna do a sub three second 0 to 100 if we're looking at a big price hike. They reckon it's gonna be around 536 kilowatts to be exact, and around 850 newton meters of torque, which is just absurd amounts of power in a car this light with the proper setup rather than being a big Hellcat boat. You've got a front mid engine set up, you've got the proper aero and the power to back it up. Now with that power figure, we're moving away from GT3 RS territory and we're moving well into GT2 RS territory because the GT2 RS had 700 horsepower and around 800 newton meters of torque and we're 0 to 100 in sub three seconds. So are we gonna see this set new Nürburgring lap records? Which is the biggest question we got for it so far. And in terms of pricing, we know the AMG GTR here in Australia lands around $350,000 drive away. This, with this power bump and its exclusivity factor, you're probably gonna be looking well north of $400,000 for this, probably even $500,000 Australian. Now, will we even get this? Will this be legal to drive on the roads here in Australia? I mean, the simple answer is gonna be yes. It's, it's based on the AMG GT, which has already been cleared. We already have that car roaming around here in Australia. There's plenty of them, but will it be something that we'll be getting a lot of? Probably not, there will be probably be less than 10 coming here if it's anything to go by how we went with the previous SLS AMG Black Series, which I think brought around eight cars to Australia. So yeah, these things are gonna be super rare, super powerful, and super exclusive. So, I mean, if you're looking to get one, I'd be running to your AMG dealership right now to be able to <laughs> secure one, because I think this is gonna be one for the history books, because 
it's a GT3 car for the road. So if you like this video, let me know by subscribing below. It really helps out and leave a like if you like this car. I'm, pretty, I'm looking forward to it. I just wanna see it driving around the track and see how it performs compared to its competition like the GT2 RS. And if you haven't checked it out already, I had a look at the new Arteon R and discussing all the details about what we know about that so far too. So you can check that out right here. And I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Cameron and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.